What's the most disturbing secret you've discovered about someone close to you? Reddit go! The 24 hours before my dad died, stage four lung cancer, he was in the EA and then the IQ and we were unable to be with him because of hospital COVID rules. My mother, sister and myself had been texting and calling him all day and got no response. My mother even called the hospital and spoke with one of his IQ nurses who said he was awake and communicating fine. E passed very quickly at 3.3 a.m. the next morning. We were allowed to be at his bedside, but by then he was no longer conscious, so we said our goodbyes and he was gone. Later that morning while my mom slept, I was calling cremation services to schedule his body for pickup at the hospital and going through his bag of belongings the hospital had returned to us. His phone was in there, and I wanted to read all our texts and take some comfort in my last words to him. I opened his phone, and all our texts had not been read, not mine or my mom and sister's. I thought this was so odd, but figured he must have been suffering so much he couldn't find the strength. I began to scroll through his apps and noticed a chat I'd been vaguely heard of. I can't recall the name, but it essentially works like WhatsApp. I opened the app and saw a single contact with a female name. I started reading and realized my dad has been chatting with this girl hourly for the last 24 hours and as far back as I could scroll. E was calling her princess and telling her he loved her and she was saying she was scared for him and wanted to know what was going on. Why was he in the AR? I scrolled back enough to know that this was someone he was having at the very least, an emotional affair with. My grief was completely hijacked by hurt and anger, and a week later, I tracked the girl down and spoke to her and found out she was 19 years old. She was 17 when they met. He was her high school bus driver, and she told me they had been dating for almost two years. My dad was 66 years old when he died and dating someone younger than his grandchildren, someone he chose to spend his last moments with and say his last goodbyes to. I hope it made him happy, but it sure is a shitty secret to live the rest of my life with. A secret that will forever overshadow my entire relationship with my dad with no chance to ever speak to him about it. It's the one secret I wish I'd never found out. The reason grandma moved away when my dad was still a baby to a big city more than three days away from her family was because she stabbed her stepfather and almost killed him. It was a very small village. Later, she told me he was a rapist. She didn't elaborate on that and I didn't ask any follow-up questions. She ended the convo with I did the right thing. We never met her side of the family. She was my best friend of seven years. We had literally been through it all together. I moved out of state with my now husband, but she convinced us both to move back to be closer with her after about a year. We had no real ties to the state we had tried out, so we said, screw it, let's go back. She's basically family. We were all so happy to be reunited. She was over almost every night for dinner. We all laughed and talked and had a blast. Best year of my life. Then slowly she started trying to turn my husband and I against each other. Anytime we had an argument, like any couple does, she would text each of us about how right we were, trying to foster animosity between the two of us. With me, she started talking about how she had a plan B for us, that if my husband and I could make it work, I could move in with her and wed live happy lives together. With my husband, she started talking about her infertility issues and how she wanted to have a kid just like him. She just needed a sperm donor. This all happened at around the same time, and my husband and I compared texts and figured it out. E, she wanted to take his sperm and have a baby with me. When confronted about it, she refused to admit anything and started lashing out at both of us. It got to the point where she would show up unannounced, banging on the door, demanding a place in our home. It was so terrifying and panic-inducing that we ended up having to move and change our phone numbers. I guess it's so disturbing because I had never had a friend like her, only to find out that she, well, she cared about me, but in such an unhealthy and scary way. But yeah, that's my story. Husband and I are great now, by the way. Found a scrapbook of my mom and a guy I didn't recognize from her immediately post-college days. Turns out he was a long-term boyfriend of hers who killed himself when she broke up with him. My grandfather found his body. I learned at age 20 by finding the book or shrine to him. The kid that bullied me in 5th and 6th grade. Turns out his father was molesting him and his brother throughout their childhood. 
One night as a kid, I heard my parents having an explosive argument in their bedroom, which suddenly went quiet. The door was closed and locked. I found out during a drunk phone call from my mother it was because she attempted to shoot my father in the face, but it didn't go off when she pulled the trigger as there were no bullets. They were both horrified and just stared at each other, apparently. They're still together. My brother was stealing money from father who had dementia. This went on for a year and the I found out about it was because the bank who had my father's mortgage called me wondering why it hadn't been paid in six months. My father's bank account went into the negative around this time too. And when I confronted my brother about it, he said, well, I gotta pay my bills. I was about to take control of all the accounts and make sure Shot got back on track, but my father ended up in the hospital and died shortly after that. My brother also stole some of my inheritance too. In the end, he stole over $5,000 from his dying father. So my grandmother, who's been estranged from my family for a long time now for a multitude of reasons, has this weird thing where she has to share food with people. Are you ordering steak at the restaurant? Well, oh boy, she's got to order the same thing even if she doesn't like steak. Try her drink, it's really good. Take the first bite of chicken to let her know if it's any good. This always really annoyed me because I hate sharing food. One day I brought it up to my mom and she was like, oh yeah, grandma is afraid of being poisoned, so she wants other people to try it first. So let me get this straight, grandma thinks someone is trying to poison her so she has me try the food first. And it makes so much sense looking back because she literally would not take a bite of anything she ordered until someone else had a bite first. Thanks, Grandma. My great-grandmother was married to three different people at the same time. The men were from different branches of the military. She was collecting all three of their paychecks at a time. Discovered that my sister stole my father's $2,500 Rolex not more than 24 hours after he died. I only discovered it when her and her husband made a frivolous purchase and I wondered where they got their money, since they were always broke and begging my parents for money. I got suspicious. It hit me that she might have stolen and sold the Rolex, had the paperwork, ran a track on the sales history and discovered it had been sold to a pawn shop down the street from where my sister lived. Went to the pawn shop and after a bit of persuasion got them to tell me who sold it to them and it was my sister. Me and my mom disowned her. Just found out the other day that it wasn't my neighbor's dad who senselessly shot and killed my dog. It was his son, who I was close friends with. He did it on purpose. He knew how much that dog meant to me too. I also found out the other day where he lives. He's a meth head now, so I'll just let nature or the police do their thing. My grandfather beat someone to death. My dad was an only child, but my grandmother was once pregnant with my dad's younger brother. When she was six months pregnant, someone in construction equipment ran over the car she was driving and she lost the baby. While she was in the hospital, my grandfather found the guy and beat him to death. From what I understand, he was in jail for about a week before he was released. Apparently, he claimed temporary insanity due to the circumstances. I learned all this about four years ago when my brother was researching family history and asked my grandfather about it. I've always seen him as a nice little old man. When my grandfather passed away, we discovered that he did not exist. His name was not in any government registry. He was a normal citizen, paid taxes, had a license and everything. Lived a long life, married to my grandmother for over 50 years, had multiple children, everything normal. Still to now, no one knows who he really was and why he had a false name. I found out that the reason why one of my uncles didn't want to go back to Korea when he retired was that he couldn't, he was fearful for political reprisals if he tried to return. It turned out his brother was part of the group that assassinated the South Korean president back in 1979 and his own innocence was never proven so he was in fear of getting arrested if he ever tried to go back. Jesus f Christ, dude. Just dropped a bomb larger than Reddit nonchalantly. Seriously, how often do you get to see someone who is linked to a presidential assassination in any way? I just found out my aunt and uncle slept together a few years ago, and somehow my dad is the bad guy for cutting them both off. Edit. For context, they were brother and sister, not a non-blood-related married couple.
Thank you for watching the video to the end. Tell us in the comments what's the most disturbing secret you've discovered about someone close to you. I will be glad to like and subscribe. It will help the channel a lot. See you next time.